Today I'm going to show you how to make this delicious dairy-free broccoli cheddar soup. Uh, this is one of my favorites, but the problem with getting these at restaurants is of course it contains dairy, but this recipe is all dairy-free. So the first thing you want to add to your pan is a half a cup of a dairy-free butter alternative. And we're just going to let this melt on a, a medium low heat to medium. And I'm just going to let that melt in my pan. And while this is melting, I usually go ahead and chop up two cloves of garlic. Okay, now that my butter is melted, I'm going to add my two cloves of chopped garlic. Give that a little stir. Now I'm going to add my one half cup of all purpose regular white flour. And all we're basically doing here is we're making a roux. So now that my flour and butter are nice and incorporated, I'm just going to let that sit for about a minute and until I kind of hear a little bit of a sizzle before I add my liquid ingredients. Okay, so now I'm going to add one cup of water. Okay, now I'm going to add two cups of chicken broth. And then I'm just going to stir that a little bit until some of these ingredients are a little more incorporated together. We wanna break up those large bits of flour and that are mixed with the butter. So now you can see that the flour and butter are more incorporated with the liquid ingredients. It kind of is a creamy color, more of a white color. Okay, so I've let the temperature heat this up a little bit and it will start to bubble at the bottom. And then you can kind of just give that a good stir before you add your dairy-free milk. And the type of dairy-free milk that I like to use is this silk um, almond and cashew with the protein because it just gives it a nice thickening um, agent and it's more like a real milk. So now that this is starting to bubble and thicken a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and give it one last stir and then I'm going to add my dairy-free milk. I'm adding three cups of the dairy-free milk and as you can see this kind is, is creamy looking. Something about the almond cashew with the protein really adds to this creaminess of this soup. So I'm going to give that a good stir. You can see it's getting nice and creamy. At this point, if you have fresh broccoli, you can go ahead and chop up your fresh bro broccoli and add that because that's going to take longer than frozen microwaved steamed broccoli. Okay, so I usually use the frozen broccoli and it comes in a bag that I can just steam in the microwave for about four minutes. Now you can use fresh, but like I said, you wanna add that earlier. So since I'm not using fresh, I'm not going to add this quite yet. I'm going to go ahead and steam this in the microwave and let my soup thicken just a little bit before I add it. So I've let this thicken for about five to eight minutes while my broccoli was steaming in the microwave and a little bit longer than that. And now I'm going to add a teaspoon of garlic powder. This is optional, but I just find that it gives it a little better flavor. Then I'm going to add one teaspoon of salt and give that a good stir. And of course, if you you know, want more salt, you can always taste this before you serve it and add a little more salt. I just find that if I start with one teaspoon, that's safe. 
and I don't get it overly salty. So now I'm going to give that about another five minutes and then I'm going to add my steamed broccoli. Okay, so you can see this is really starting to thicken. I'm going to give this a good stir and turn this down just a little bit on my stove top. And now I'm going to go ahead and add this steamed broccoli. Before you add your steamed broccoli, make sure you cut a little corner off and drain out the liquid before you add it to your soup because there's always a lot of liquid in these little pouches. So I've cut the corner off and drained my liquid. Now I'm going to add my broccoli into my soup. I'm going to let this cook about another 10 to 15 minutes until this broccoli breaks up into smaller chunks. And you can just kind of break it up um, after about five, 10 minutes with your whisk. Okay, now that I've let that simmer and kind of cook for about five minutes with my steamed broccoli, I'm gonna break up some of that broccoli. And you can see it's in a lot smaller bits now. I just don't like large bits of broccoli in my broccoli cheddar. I like them to be smaller, but you can, you know, cook it however long you want according to how you like your broccoli. And if you do fresh broccoli, you know, you do want to add your broccoli earlier and cook it a little longer until it gets tender. Okay, now that my broccoli is nice and tender and broken up, I'm going to add one cup of a dairy-free shredded cheddar cheese. I'm just going to give that a good stir. Now some of the dairy-free cheese melts easier than others. It just depends on what type you get. So I just usually let that melt for about five minutes and stir it every few minutes. And the good thing is with this soup, if you cannot find a dairy-free shredded cheddar where you live, then you can also use for this soup, my dairy-free cheddar cheese sauce recipe. And then you would just decrease the liquid. You would omit the one cup of water and you would subtract one cup of milk because that would be in the cheddar cheese sauce. So for this recipe, I will put a link below the video. Also within the recipe, I will link to my cheddar cheese sauce recipe. So now that our cheese is melted and our broccoli is nice and broken up, our soup took about a good 10, 12 minutes after I added the cheese to thicken. It is ready to serve. And you can see that it's a good consistency and thickness. For more dairy-free recipes, be sure to like and subscribe and check the link below for a printable recipe.